the R video tutorial on agent base models part 10. Last time we created a function for our agents. This time what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, or I've already done the same thing, for our model in the sense of we made a function out of it so that it runs everything we need it to do without us doing any work involved. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, I first created some parameters because I need to pass these through. These are the variables that I, before in our code I had just hard coded them in and I'll show you where they are as we go through here. Then I created a susceptible to exposed parameter which was a number that we had just hard coded in and an exposed to infected which we had hard coded in and we also are going to need this I2D and I2D is the infected to death. So these are going to be our parameters this is going to be susceptible to exposed exposed to infected infected to death. Okay, so these are going to be our parameters, and what I've did is I've created a function here called ABM1. So uh, we're going to pass through it our agents, we're going to pass through it our parameters, and we're going to pass through it how long we want to run. Okay, so these are the key things that we're passing through this particular function. Now, uh, as long as we've got our parameters here, we should be good to go from the previous code that you had because really all you need to do is to get how many rows you have. Okay, so they're going to use this npop1 because we didn't pass it in. We could pass it in, but agent1 already has that information with it. Uh, our parameters and our time. So we get our n rows of our agent one, that becomes this. We can now take our n time one and comment it out. We don't need it anymore because we're passing it through. We're, that way we can make it dynamic. Sometimes we want to run it farther, run it less. We'll be able to just change it inside the function argument. Again, we have out just like we had before. Nothing's changed there. Now what we did do is right here is when we came down through here, we have par one max mix. Okay, before we just had a number 10, which was the maximum number somebody would mix with based off their mixing parameter. And then we added one to it before, but this was just where the number 10 was. So if you swap that out in your code, you should be good to go. Okay, now if we scroll down through, everything's the same until we get to here. Okay. So this was where we had, I think it was 0.025 or 0.25. Now what you need, I just replaced this. The reason we want to do this is we want to change these values as we go along. So we want to be able to pass them into the code instead of hard coding them every single time. And that sets us up pretty much to where we were uh, last time, except that now we're going to grab the people who we've exposed and... Um, take those and increment those just the same. So there's no change here. Uh, there's no change here. Um, there's really no change up to here. So we have par one is E to I. Okay. So this E to I, what it does is it's just the parameter that we've set that is the, I think it was 0.1 before, but it was a hard coded number and we want to pass these through so that we can change them. We don't want to constantly have to go into our function and change it. We want our function to be dynamic enough that we can put the information in and it provides it for us. Now here we kept the 14 and we kept the 3 because we believe these are known values. We know that people after they become exposed, so they just go off to being recovered after about 14 days if they don't become sick. Now, and we also know that people who are exposed they don't become sick until after being exposed for around three or four days. So I put, they have to be greater than three in order for this to work. At that, uh, we're going to not make a parameter. We could make those parameters, but we're not. All right. And then what we've did here is we've actually added a little bit more. So you should be good up to here. We added this little bit extra here that is going to tell people whether or not they become, uh, once they become infected, we're keeping track of their time infected. Okay, we're incrementing that just like we did before. We're going to take the number of people who have been sick longer than 14 days and we're gonna put them into the recovered bin because people who become sick, you know, it's not usually more than 14 days before they become recovered. All right, and then here, what we have is um, 
we're going to say, well, what about those who haven't become, haven't recovered yet? Well, those are the people who uh, could potentially die. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the people who are infected, who've been infected for less than 15 days or 14, yeah, 14 days or less. And then what we're going to do is we're going to randomly, and we're using this if else statement, and we're going to randomly assign them the uh, whether or not that they have perished or not. And notice there's another parameter here, I2D. So of those who get sick, a certain proportion of them each day will go from being infected, which is uh, if this number, the random number is bigger than this number, they stay infected and sick. And if the random number is less than this number, then they are, become deceased. And the rest of it's the same, and then we just return it. And sure enough, uh, once we return it, everything should work. So all we have to do is compile all this. I know this is a bit long, but we really didn't change a lot. There was a lot of copying and pasting. So here we go. Um, it provides us notice people are moving into the death. Um, there is some weird behavior here as some people are moving out, right? We go from one to zero and we'll address that in the next video. But uh, it was because we have, we set things up initially. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to fix things. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll down to what I added to the code that was the bigger portion here. And um, so this is where we had whether it became sick or not last time. All of this here is new. So if you haven't gotten this code yet, what you can do is you can just simply pause the video here and copy this code down and you should be set to go. And I'll see you in the next video.